what we will be doing in this video is showing you how to download and install Qt with the options that you want. In this case, we will be going for the main compiler and all the modules available for the latest Qt 5.15 version at the time of this recording, as this is the latest long-term supported release. First, we go to the Qt account, which is at https account.qt.io, and log in with your username and password. When logged in, you have access to your license information and can also create a support ticket. But we will focus on downloading and installing Qt in this video. Click on Downloads and then make sure that Qt Online Installer is selected in the list of products. You may find it is already done for you. And then we click on Download. Since the online installer does not contain anything but the means to access the online service to download and install Qt from, then this should only take a minute at the most. Once the installer is downloaded, then go to where you have downloaded it to, or go via your browser's download list and open the installer. The first page you get will ask you to log into your Qt account. Fill in the fields using the same email and password as before and click on Next. As you have a commercial license, then it will say, Welcome to Commercial Qt Setup. If you are not seeing this, then please open the support request and we will rectify that for you. Now we click on Next, and this will quickly download the metadata needed to know about what Qt versions and other products that you have access to. This next page is about whether you want to send user statistics in Qt Creator to the Qt company or not. I will personally select yes for this and then click on next. Now you can choose the directory that Qt should be installed into. The easiest option next is to select the default Qt 5.15 desktop installation. What this does is installs the latest version of Qt 5.15 for the main compiler for the desktop. This also includes all the optional modules that comprise part of the version of Qt 2. This will also include the latest version of Qt created for you. You can also choose the default Qt 6 desktop installation if you want to use the very latest Qt version available to you. If you are starting off completely fresh and don't have a preference about the Qt version being used, then Qt 5.15 is the one to use as this is the latest long-term supported version of Qt and has all the modules available to you. Should you want to have more control over what is installed, then select the custom installation. In order to show you this part, I will choose this to select the same things that the default version would pick. Now click on Next. What you have here is a list of everything you have access to broken down into four different groups. I will not go into detail about each one, but I will briefly explain them. Archive is a list of all the older Qt versions ones which are no longer supported, or ones that have since been replaced by a newer version in the same range, such as Qt 5.15.1, now that Qt 5.15.2 has come out. Note that this list will change depending on when you install. LTS is a list of just the long-term supported versions of Qt that are supported currently. Latest releases are the latest releases of any supported versions of Qt, so this will also include the non-long-term supported versions too. Lastly, Preview is for those releases which are currently in beta and release candidate stages. What we will do now is install Qt 5.15.2 for the MinGW 8.1.0 compiler. First, we expand the Qt entry and then the Qt 5.15.2 entry and we can see all the possible options. This lists all the platforms that you have available and which can be used from the desktop you are installing from. So on Windows you can, assuming you have a license for it, install the pre-built versions of Qt for WebAssembly and Android, as well as Windows Desktop. Click on the box next to MinGW 8.1.0 64-bit to choose the pre-built version of Qt for that version. And since we want to have all of the extra modules, you need to put a tick next to the ones in the list.
As you can see, there are other variants here which enable you to install for different compilers, but for this installation, we only want MinGW 8.1.0 64-bit with all the available modules. Now that we're ready to go through the final steps, we click on Next. The next page is the license agreement. As I am already aware of the contents here, I can click on the button next to I read and agree to the terms contained in the license agreement. When you're ready to do that, then click on that button and then click on Next. Now we can choose the folder where the shortcuts will be installed in the start menu. For this I will keep the default as cute and now I click on next and it is ready to be installed. All I need to do is click on install and then the installation will take place for you. As this will take a bit of time then we will cut the video here and skip to the page after this has finished installing. Now that the cute installation has finished all that remains to be done is to click on finish and Qt Creator will start for you and you will be ready to start working on your application. If you ran into any problems along the way, then please open a support request via the support centre and our support team will be happy to help you. Thank you for watching.